All right, everyone, welcome to our Wednesday 101 webinar for August. I can't believe it's already August, but here we are. And um, if you're like me, you have tomatoes coming out of your ears. And uh, so excited to have uh, Chris Williams here with Pepperberry's uh, Urban Farm to just school us on the Canning 101. This is this is not going to be anything that goes uh, super in depth or covers, you know, all the the minute details that might go into canning. There's so many ways to do it and so many things to can, but we're gonna give it a a go today to get you the basics. And um, so we'll get started with that in in just a few minutes. I wanted to give you a quick overview of who we are. We useful your your host today, and um, we are a nonprofit organization. This is our website, and uh, it is a way for um, you to be able to find if you're in the Kansas City area, which I'm so grateful that we have so many people from. Uh, outside of our region, but if you are here in Kansas City and you have still good stuff, you can look here. Uh, you just go to donate and you'll find the form. It's really easy to follow. So um, this way you can uh, just find some organizations based on your search criteria that can take your still good stuff. You can find more information about them by clicking on their link, including their mission, a little bit more information about them and uh, who they serve and what they do, their items accepted, and then you can contact them directly through our website to arrange for your donation. We say we're like Tinder, but we don't make the dinner reservation for you. Um, and in, in addition to our website, we have also um, just hosted our first full repair cafe, and uh, we do our end dumpster days here in the Kansas City um, region as well, and um, that is a one-stop donation collection drive for you to bring all your still good items as well as uh, electronics to be recycled. Um, and tires to be recycled and paper to be shredded. So with that, I am going to go ahead and hand it on over to Chris Williams. Um, and I think maybe I um, unmuted you. So um, you can go ahead and unmute. You should be able to unmute. It's noisy getting ready for a, a canning webinar, y'all. <laughs> there, can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming to our online um, canning class. I'm just going to give you a little bit of information, then we're going to talk about the safety and the no-nos of canning. And in the background, you are going to hear my husband, Bradford. He is actually canning. And so I'll be showing you some of the different things that he's doing as we go along. He's making a great peach jam today. So um, bear with me when I get ready to do that. I will be taking my phone and kind of showing you walk around with that and hopefully not make you dizzy. So a little bit about us. We have been canning for over 35 years. Um, we started out gardening and when our kids were saying, hey, I need to eat every day. I don't know why they wanted to eat every day, but so we put in a bigger garden and so they could eat all the time. We have five kids. And um, so, the year that we put in this really big garden, I looked at it and I went, oh my goodness, I don't have room to 
Let me, the computer's saying something, just a moment. It, you're fine, Chris, you're fine. Okay, all right. So um, so we, we put in this huge garden and I realized, oh my goodness, I don't have room in the freezer and we can't eat it all at one time. So I had to learn how to can on my own. And we were right here in the city. I didn't know anybody that can. And so I just had to learn how to do it from some books and just pray that I was doing everything right. And so because of that is why we really got into teaching canning. Because I am a hear it, see it, do it person. I needed that person next to me. And so that's how we teach all of our classes. So, and then we actually will be having a canning class coming up probably October or November of this year. And we're still looking for the sites we're gonna do, but we've got a lot of people asking to be able to do this class. And it's normally a three to four hour class. So you are gonna get a really fast um, information on it and, and not a tons of detail. But what I wanna talk about first is the safety. Online, there are a lot of, on Facebook, um, canning groups. I have a lot that I follow. There are some that I will never ever use a recipe from because they don't use safety. There it's, well, grandma did it. Well, I saw this recipe. It doesn't matter if you did it that way. And, and so there are, there's a reason behind that they've done studies on this and found out what are safe ways to can. And my philosophy is I'm going to feed myself and my kids and I don't want to take chances. And then we sell product at market and I don't want to take chances with our customers either. So I want to follow all the rules that they have set before us. So the first thing always to remember is everything needs to be sterilized and clean. Um, so I always sterilize our counters, um, our jars and our lids all get sterilized. And so right now we have in our big water bather, we've got the jars in there boiling and, they're, and they don't have to go to, up to a boil, but they've got to get hot and stay at that hot temperature for three minutes. But we tend to get them started. That's the first thing we put on and then we turn it down after so long and don't worry about it. So they're nice and sterilized. Our flat, the flat lids are sterilized. Could you hear me a flat lid? Um, so if you do not know what a flat lid is, it has a ring that goes with it, but this is the flat part of it. So this has to be sterilized. The ring does not have to be sterilized because it's never going to touch the food. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about jars. When I get my jars ready, um, you can reuse your jars. That's what's so great about canning. Um, you need to make sure that your jars are nice and sterilized. But before I put them in to sterilize them, I check the rims with my finger and make sure there's no cracks or chips. Um, I make sure I look when I wash them, if I see any visual crack in it, I don't want to throw away that jar because it's going to crack in your water bath or definitely in a pressure can. We're going to talk about pressure canning today. but So that's a safety that you want to check. Okay. Um, the other thing on the safety is just because grandma did it doesn't mean that it's safe for us now. And a lot of people, well, but grandma lived till she was 96. Be thankful. Okay. But that, but don't take risks with your family. So the inverted method of canning where you put your product in here, you've got your hot lid on your hot jar, and then you turn it upside down and let it seal itself, it will seal, but it's not gonna take the air out like um, you do in the water bath. And the water bath takes it up to a higher temperature. It's gonna be a really good seal on it instead of a very light seal. And what's important about that is when you're canning, you're not canning for next week or for next month. You're trying to can six months out. And some stuff lasts for several years. But if you can't make that lid stay on there really tight for six months, then it's going to pop and it's going to get contaminated and you're going to have to throw it out. So all your hard work that you did is being wasted. So the inverted will seal it because it's got heat, but it's not going to be a long lasting heat. 
and it's not going to get that air out because when you are you're trying to get air out because air is what is contaminating your food so the water bath uh, method does that and um and so um the, there's also something popular going around that says you can can in the oven or even you can sterilize in the oven that is another very dangerous thing. Canning jars were made to get hot with liquid in them, not a dry heat. So uh, it, they're, they are made to do a wet heat. Putting them in the oven, you're getting a dry heat. So you're heating up that glass differently and you're taking a chance again. Um, and so it's the same method too, if you're putting the food back in there and sealing in the oven, you're not it's not coming up to the right temperature with liquid around it liquid has a different temperature than the dry heat so another unsafe way to do it um there have been a lot of different ways that people have tried them and it's just it, it, get something that has been scientifically tested one of the things that um a lot of people are doing now too is is doing a dry, I don't know if you call it dry, but they're, no, we're going to skip that part. I'm going to go on to another thing that's very popular. Um, I just saw somebody do a cream of mushroom soup. Milk cannot be done in any canning like this. Of any home canning. We can't get it up to the right temperature for it to be safe. And we don't need botulism growing. So the rules are no milk or any dairy product, no oil, no um, flour. And um, see if there was something else. Um, I'm missing something else. There's another one. So, so there's, you want to follow those recipes that are tested and if they have flour in them or corn. Sometimes you can put cornstarch in it. That cornstarch is safe, but it makes it have a blob when you're get your food done and maybe not right away, but a month later, there's a blob in there and it doesn't look very well. It's not going to hurt you but you just need to stay away from it. If you're going to use a thickener, um, you want to use a pectin. Um, even if you're not making a jelly, you can use pectin for making the great uh, a soup uh, thicker, okay? Oh, the other thing that you cannot water bath is any meat. Anything that has meat in it has to be pressure canned, okay? So um, the difference too is the acids. So a water bath canner, has high acid, which any of the fruits are counted as that. Um, your tomatoes are counted as, even though it's a fruit, we think of it as a vegetable. Um, the other thing, if you're doing a pickled item, that's a high acid. So you could actually take carrots that are a low acid. So not all vegetables can be canned in a water bathroom. They need to be pressure canned. But if you add acid, the vinegar, to pickles or beans, then you can use the water bath. But if there's no pickling of it, it has to be pressure canned. So when you're, I would advise you to go out and get a canning, a tested canning uh, book. I was going to show you the front of this one, but my front page is gone because this is one that I use all the time. But Ball and Kerr, um, some of the other ones have been tested. They're, they're very good and grab them. Um, and they'll have the tested ingredients and what, I mean, if, if it calls for flour, then it's not for home canning. Um, it also has in there how long you're gonna be canning everything. Um, different products take different times. The majority in water bath is about 10 minutes um, for the size that we do. But if you're doing a large quart, it's longer on some of this stuff. So let's talk a little bit about jars. Um, this one is a half gallon. 
Rarely do I ever can in a half gallon. You have to have a pretty big pot to do this in. And so, but we've done it before. We've done juice up in it when we know that's, that's we're going to go on and make a jelly out of it. So it is um, feasible. Um, this is a quart. And this is called a wide mouth quart because it has the wide mouth here. Same, same size as, as on this one. This is a quart. And this is a small mouth quart. You guys see the difference in size? They're also, this is also called a regular jar too, okay? So that's the difference, but they hold the same amount of liquid or product in them. This is a pint, so it's the half size of a quart. So it takes two pints to make a quart. Takes two quarts to make the gallon. Okay. Um, this is an oddball. This falls in between these two. It's pretty. It's great for Christmas presents. Or if you're doing asparagus or long carrots or beans, this is a really good one. But it, the size falls right in between the pint and the quart. And then we're going to drop jump down. Oh, wait. I want to. This one is a pint also, but it's a wide mouth pint. This works really well if you're doing um, pickles, pickles, um, anything that you've got to get your hands down and really push down into it. If you're doing salsa, the small mouth works really great. And then this is counted as a jelly jar. It is eight ounces. This one is a jelly jar, so different, different look, but it's still eight ounces. And these are all the small mouth ones. This is a um, four ounce jelly jar. Still uses the same size of lid as the other ones. So that's kind of a breakdown all of, of all of these. Um, there are a lot of different ones you can find out there. So it doesn't matter that. You just need to know what your family size is. We, when, the, when we had the kids at home, I did quarts on almost everything. But as it's now just my husband and I, we most of the time do our salsas and the small, the pints, because I just don't get it ate quick enough. Same with the jellies, all of that. So it changes our family, changed on what size I use the most. Um, Leslie, does there anybody have any questions right now before I go on to the next part? We can certainly pause for any questions. Anybody have one? Chris, you showed a variety of jars. Uh, are any of these, like, did you purchase all of them? Did any of them come from somewhere else? Like, what's the compatibility as far as the lids go with like jars that we might just have lying around? Right. So there are some jars, and it used to be the old mayonnaise jars worked very well for water bathing because um, they were glass to begin with. Now they're, they're plastic. But if you can get a hold of the old ones, and I don't have any out here, they fit the small lid. So they work perfect for it. Now, I do not use any of those types of jars for pressure canning. If I'm going to pressure can it, it's going under a lot of pressure. I want to make sure my jar is really good and, and ready for it. Oh, so, so like here, this is an old mayonnaise jar or something and it's a wide mouth i could use that in my canning but i do it as a water bath okay um then the lids i i think you took my flat back yeah. can i have a flat in there, please um lids you only want to use one time jars you can use over and over and over and over, as long as they're still stay in good shape and there's no cracks or chips in them. Um, so that that's wonderful. But on these flat lids, you only use them one time. And part of the reason is, is when you put this lid on here and it seals, it's going to make a perfect ring around that top. And when you take it off, the ring is still there. So if you reuse it, 
you've got a chance that it might not seal because it has its own ring already made. Um, I don't, and, and when the shutdown happened, we actually got real close to where we were gonna have to start using our old rings, because I don't throw them away. You can use them on uh, leftovers. You can use them on um, dry ingredients, anything like that. So I don't throw mine away. But it got really, really close there where I was like, my gosh, it's so hard to get jars and rings that and flats that I was like, we might have to go on and break down to do this to keep going for our farmer's market. So we didn't have taught me a lesson that I, I, I'm going to be keeping more rings because if something ever happens, I will be used to them. So then I know that it's not going to have as good a steel as a brand new flat does. But these are all also great to make crafts out of too. So if you're a crafter, they're, they're a great thing to um, Let's see. The rings itself, um, they tend to get old after a while. They start looking chipped and rusty. They'll clean up some. And so I, I, I reuse them over and over until they really are looking pretty bad. Um, and then I'll throw them away or use them for a craft also. So here's a ring that's looking pretty rough. We're not going to use it on our game anymore. And it'll clean up some. It's got the chips through here. And this is never going to touch the food. But um, I just, I, I don't use them after a while. So that's more really that. Wonderful Christmas gift. A craft is an old, ugly thing. But paint it up, put some crocheted stuff in there or embroidered. So uh, we're hey, still getting hey, Chris, to use them. We're, we're having uh, trouble with yes. your audio. Do you want to switch from your um, cell phone to maybe your computer? Okay, so take our turn off your cell phone. Yeah, you're, I, I, I think something is up with your um, microphone on your laptop. It says it's not muted, but I think it might be. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Technical difficulties. You can imagine uh, cell phone coverage in a kitchen might not be exactly perfect. Okay, I just, can you hear me now? Yeah, but yeah. now we got an echo. So just one of your mic mics needs to go off. It says it is muted. You're going to get an echo if you get far away from the screen. Okay. We're just, I'm going to be walking over to the other side of the kitchen here. Can you hear me now? Is it bad? It's, it, it's not too, too bad. We can, we can understand you. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you a little bit about what's going on over here. Um, when we're making jellies, um, we use a pectin. Where's the box of pectin? Um, we we went through a lot of trial and error on our pectins, and because we do a lot of, of jellies for uh, market, if we get back from the kitchen and we have fifty percent that did not um, did not set, it didn't gel up. That meant that we had to get back to the kitchen and redo all of that again. And it was so frustrating. And we finally got a hold of a pectin that we don't have that problem. And so it is called Pomona's Universal Pectin. And I'm going to show you guys the, the picture of it. Does that show up on there? I don't know. Can you guys see the picture? Hold, hold on. I got to unspotlight you. This is just a, a whole... Uh... I can just tip there we go. There. there it is. There we go. Okay. 
All right, good. All right, so this is the pectin that we use now. It goes by math. Um, so what we were finding with the other pectins is that, let me show them. Um, so this, let me just show a picture here of the sugar and we've got the pectin in there. I wanted to just see how it is. We have to stir it up really good so it's the, the tan color. And so we mix it into the jelly or into the sugar. And um, so what we've done ahead of time, I've done all the math. And this is all done on math, math by how much fruit we're putting in. And so we were able to go, okay, we can adjust how much pectin we need in each one instead of going with the sure gel or with any of those other ones that they said, I'll just put this in with this amount. And sometimes that was cut with silicone and we might not get the right amount of pectin in it then. And so we were not having stuff that was setting. So this worked so much better for us. So we go by the batch of it and um, where everything works in four cups for your fruit. And so Bradford, is stirring right now and just getting it mixed up really, really well. And then he has got over here, we've got our um, jars boiling and he's got the fruit in here coming up to a boil. So he's put in, um, I think he did 32 cups of total fruit. So he did um, 16 cups of grape juice and 16 cups of peaches. And so now it, as soon as it comes to a boil, then he's going to be adding this sugar. We also, did you already put your calcium water in? Yeah, calcium and lemon. Okay, so in the fruit, he also added our lemon juice to make sure there was plenty of acid. And then we put what the company provides calcium that we add to water. And so that helps that pectin to stand up tall, kind of. And so we he's already put that in with the fruit. And so he's bringing all that to a boil. And as soon as it comes to a boil, he'll put the um, sugar on in and then bring it to a boil again and it is ready to put into the jars. So um, so what we kind of do for our business is we do local fruit. Um, well, we first we grow a lot of stuff ourselves, but then we buy from local farmers and we buy um, through the whole season, pop it in the freezer and do a lot of this canning time. So um, we try to stay, our, keep our footprint as small as possible. Now, peaches here this year froze. Almost all the peach trees froze in our area. So we didn't have peaches for our area, very few. And they're, the ones that did put the price up really high for um, just one case of peaches. So we actually got some Georgia peaches this year just so that we could do our regular stuff. So last week we made a peach habanero jelly, which the habaneros are from our farm. We made um, peach elderberry last week, which the elderberries is also from our farm. And then today we're doing the peach grape. And those grapes were from a farm that's about 30 miles from us. And so that's kind of what we do. We just can't do everything local, but something in it is always local. So right now, Bradford has taken, Bradford, you still have to do this part. Yes, I know. Okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna show you a picture. The, the jelly is just about ready. It's boiling, if you guys can see that boil. So it has come up to a boil. We're going to dump the sugar into it. And I'm going to actually help him here. This is really works well if you have two people kind of working on it. I'm showing it. Okay. So now he's going to be stirring it really good and getting all that sugar dissolved. And now the bubbles have changed already. 
and so it's it's um, got cooler is what it's done and now we're going to be bringing it back up to a boil again and that'll take just a few minutes maybe three minutes four minutes not long and then he'll start putting them in the jars so i'm going to show you a few things for that helps in the kitchen when you're doing any of the canning um one of the things i truly truly love is these um, fillers that goes on top of your jar and so it makes it so much easier to see what you're how you're doing it not make a mess with your jar so these are really really handy to get also these are little magnets here because you're heating up your flats and i hate putting my fingertips into boiling water to get out of those flats so this is a magnet that will just pick up the flats for you and then it's really easy to take them off and never touch that inside of it so this stays sterile okay so he's i'm going to give these two tools back he's going to need them very soon and um also on the jars i want to talk just a little bit about the rings here on these jars so that you've got the the bigger ring or the lower ring here then you have another ring and when your um, recipe says that you need a half inch canning uh, head space this is what you use there's also i rarely ever use it i should have grabbed it there's also a measuring thing that you can get to measure that half inch but these rings are on here this lower one is counted as the half inch so we just never fill up past that one that and so even though this jar doesn't have that curve that neck it still has the rings here and so i know i don't want to go above that and i don't want to go below that the reason why is we want very little air in here we, and that air is going to escape but if you if your product is clear down here it's got a lot more air to try to get out out of it and then you need to be boiling it longer um so you, you try to do it all the way up to what it says half inch head space sometimes you have to do it mainly this is for pressure canning some things swell more when they're being pressure canned so if it says one inch or three-fourths inch or whatever you go by that recipe and that's how much head space you leave because it's going to swell up um so what i do say i've got um, and this happens a lot of times with our jellies i got just a little bit left not enough to put in a jar to seal so i'll go on and put it in the jar and that's what we eat this week so on uh, salsa or spaghetti sauce it might be not quite up there so that's just extra product that we're just going to enjoy this week um and it still needs to go in the refrigerator but you can go on and put it in there and and you can put a lid on it and it'll probably seal because it's got that heat but even though it's sealed in there you know that you can't put it on the shelf for shelf stable okay let's see where he's at on here all right it's not up there yet but it is coming so we're we're going to talk a little bit more and actually i'm going to let you guys ask a few questions before we go to this next step i know one person mentioned an instapot in their uh, intro so can you use an instapot you can there are some that have have the i have never done it that way okay but i know that they have some out there and you just follow their recipe on how long and how it works um there's also steam canning that is good too and what steam canning is it's in a shallow pan and you're putting a little bit of water and turn it on and so you're getting that that wet heat and so it is steaming it and sterilizing it and canning it so that works and oh, i just never had that we already had the the canners that we've got we let me just show you the different canners that we've got um so this one here is is the homage canner it's a long rectangle one this is actually our very favorite um 
we can get a lot of jars in this. These are the traditional style of canners, and we use them. Oh, they just boiled over. We got busy looking over here. It's okay. There's always always things goes on in the kitchen. So he's removed the lid, so it's calmed it down. Here, I can help you. <laughs> so. You know, you, you have accidents in the kitchen. I put this, the lid on because it would boil quicker, and in doing so, I yeah. So we've got we've got a big mess to clean up afterwards off the stove, but it's okay. The jelly's fine. All right. So there's different kind of canners. If you don't have regular canners, and you've got soup pot. You can can in that. Um, you would just, if you have a rack, you can put it in the It's wonderful. If you don't have a rack, uh, it sits on the water, water is all the way around it. Guy, I would like to say the smoke and steam from the jelly in the stove, it smells really good in there. It does. It smells good in here. Um, so, say you don't have a rack that'll fit in your big soup pan, you can actually put a towel down underneath it so it's not sitting on that far. Uh, and so, so there's ways that you can can. Um, one important, very important thing when you're canning is that you have water covering the jars totally. So when we get ready to put the jars back in there, most time you always have enough because the amount of liquid you've already put in and boiled them in, you're pouring right into back into your pan and then you're adding liquid or product into your jar. And so the volume is going up anyways. And so, but if it's not above a half inch above your um, jar when you're done, ready to start boiling it again, it's, you need to add fluid to it, um, the water. So, All Chris, right, so what, we have we yes. have a couple we have a couple comments or a couple questions in the chat. One is, um, Dave yeah. says, "I thought steam canning is not allowed anymore." <clears throat> Um, I have not checked in the last few years, so that might not be. I just I don't use that kind. Um, the last time when I did this, it was still approved. And I did all my paperwork. So it's been about four years since I, so check, I will check on that, but if you will check and make sure, um, but I, I thought that the university did approve that. And then the other question is, where do you get that magnet? Um, cool. um, they're one of they normally carry the funnel and the magnet and um seems like there was something else in it as a little kit so and, and can we it, are there other options besides walmart oh yeah um ace hardware um any of the farm stores will carry them okay so menards any of those um, you can order them online really easy off of Amazon. So okay. they're, they're wonderful. They only, they cost, well, for the whole kit, you're paying normally about $10. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds so good. Very good investment in it. So we're going to go over here and look at what Bradford is doing now. So he is removing the jars. He's dumping the water out of the, the jars from the canner. You always want to pour it away from you so you don't burn your face off and avoid splattering. I've dropped a couple times here in the splash, so you don't stand over it. I stand off to the side because most of your splash is going to go straight up. And then this is a jar lifter. Can you still in the jar? Well, see the jar lifter here so that it, it really helps a lot. Again, you're not burning yourself as much. And the easy way to hold it, if you look at how my fingers are here, I've got one tucked over, two over. That little pinky is just there kind of floating. And then my thumb is holding this part here. 
That way I can just do this and it's going to pick up what I need. So then the next part that he's going to be doing is going on and filling up the jars and he's going to, we're putting our funnel right here oh. and he's Hold going, he's going to just be, there we are. He's going to be just filling them up to that first ring. So we have the right head space. And he tries to be really careful not to drip all over the other jars because the more you drip, the more you have to clean before you put it in the water bath. Drag it right there on the edge. That'll take care of most of it, especially, I like this one because of the way it shapes. See, it, when it drips, it drips at that point. Okay, so we're gonna go on, um, let him do some filling. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the next step. Um, no matter what your, your uh, whether it's pressure canning or water bath canning, this is one of the most important steps that you're gonna do. And you're going to, I, we use a paper towel and I always dip the paper and I fold it up and then I dip it in our hot water, the sterilized water, not just out of the sink. I use the sterilized water. And then I wash my rims. And so I just go around the rim. And sometimes I have to do it a couple times because if there is anything left on here, it is not going to seal. So if a little bit of jelly got down there, I need to get it cleaned off. If I'm using something that is extremely sticky, I'm trying to think what it would be. Um, jelly sometimes, is, some of it's very sticky. I can use vinegar to clean it too. When I do pressure canning and I'm making a soup with chicken broth or anything like that, I do go, I don't just trust the, the hot water. I use vinegar. It just helps remove it uh, again. So to me, this is one of the most important steps because I want everything to seal and I want it to seal really well so that it'll last us a, a year or, or even sometimes two years. So um, that's just a very important step. And then again, using that magnet and I'm not gonna be touching this part. I can touch the silver part back here, but once it's sterilized, I wanna keep this sterilized. And so I put it on, I got a magnet. Oh. Nope, the other magnets aren't over here. Um, so I'm putting it on. Even if I have to touch it to get it off, I touch just these very edges to put it on. And then put the ring on it. And again, let me grab another ring. Chris, we had um, one question, one comment um, in the chat. Uh, where do you get your calcium? So we order our, the calcium comes with the Pomona's um, pectin. So that comes together with it. And, and I, we order it online from her um, or from the company, but um, we can also get it at Nature's, not Nature's Pantry, it's now Whole Foods. Hy-Vee used to carry it, but you can just check with your stores. Not all the stores carry this one but it comes in the package, the recipe itself, which, uh, let me just show you one. So it comes with this recipe guide for using their pectin, and it gives you the measurements that you need. Um, like right here, it says to make jam. If I wanted to do strawberry jam, it will say four cups of mashed fruit, um, a half a cup of, well, let's see, let's go over here. Two cups of sugar, two teaspoons of pectin, and two teaspoons of calcium water. So that's our complete recipe for four cups. Now this Pomona's is awesome because you can do no sugar at all. You can do monk fruit. You can do any of the artificial sugars. You can do honey. So it has the recipes for all of that. That's what I loved about this this type of pectin. Um, so the calcium water comes right with it. I only use universal pectin in my kitchen. That's why I look so beautiful and have a good complexion. <laughs> <laughs> Great ad. And then um, 
Dave did a little research for us. Uh -huh. And it looks like um, that studies since 2015 say steam canning is okay for high acid foods with a pH of 4.6 or below. Okay. Um, but it's it's probably you have to be careful and probably good to to avoid it and use alternative methods if you can. Yes. Okay. So that's what I thought it was right around that time. Um, and so so you can do jams and jellies. You can do pickled items in it. Um, you can do your tomato based stuff, your spaghetti, your chili. You cannot do chili and put hamburger in it or even the spaghetti. So what I do on any of those is it's just the sauce and it's easy enough to then cook up your hamburger and add your sauce to your hamburger when you're making your meal. Um, so, and then there are, I don't know, um, let me see if I can find these real fast. So you can get um, from a restaurant store, um, you can get pH testers and, or acid tester, and um, they're not that expensive. And when we try a new product, so a new, say we got a hold of service berry or um, autumn olives, so anything like that that we're turning in jam and it's not been one that we've used before, I always check the, the pH on it with the, this little, just a little tab that you stick down there that changes the colors and it tells me, oh yeah, it's got a good, the 4.6 that you need or if it's too high or if it's too low. And so um, I add, and we do that to all of ours, we add lemon juice, but some recipes call to add vinegar to them because you it's just a lower acid so you need to make that acid higher all right um, so it looks like bradford's pretty busy back there uh are we are we putting lids yeah, on me, yet okay so he is you gonna move it over here yep all right so he has got his jam in here it's very liquidy and if you guys can see uh, try, I'm sorry to make you guys so dizzy. Yeah. There. Okay. So you can see this was a little low. So he didn't get an A+. Plus. Well, that one's a little high, so you need to take yeah. some out of it. So we're going to go on and... I have control. You guys are in trouble now. <laughs> yeah, right. so this okay. one here is a little high. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the jelly out of it and add it to the one that's lower. Well, that makes me dizzy looking at that. I know, it does me too. This one's a little high. So remember, we want the right head space. Okay, I think those look pretty good. So our next step is we're going to go on and wash the tops. And he's gonna use a paper towel with the, the sterilized hot water and get that all done and then um, we'll put the flat lids on. So he's just folding up and, and we don't have to fold it up, but that's just kind of how we do it. It actually, when it wakes up into this, it gives you a dry spot. So I'm not burning my fingers. Well, I'm going to burn my fingers anyway. So Bradford has a, uh, this tradition that he does every time we can he burns himself at least three times so yeah but i made up for that by dumping everything on the stove oh yeah that's right so he's going around each one of them and he did he did a really good job and not drip it on him that's just important if you can go slow enough so you don't drip so you're not having to work so hard So we only have eight minutes left. I want to make okay. sure that we are able to get through full, the full process. Okay. So um, are we are we almost ready to get the lids on yeah. some of them? Yeah. Well, we're gonna. I'm gonna go on what he's already. Um, the lids are hot, and I just slipped it there a little bit. There. 
hard to do it with one hand. Okay. Right here. All right. Yeah. So it is really, it's a two handed job. So he's going to bring over. Now we already boiled these. We sterilized them. So now we're going to go on and we're going to get the. Sometimes they stick together. And so you kind of have to shake them off. Okay. Sometimes you just move on. And I'm going fast here. Generally, yeah. I'm more skilled than this. All right, and why don't we stop right there and let's go on and put rings on. They're right there. Oh. So the next thing we're gonna go on and put on is the rings. And we do this. It's that was called, the second one. It's called the finger tight. So we don't do it real tight. We don't need that manly tightness. It's just finger tight because when it, we want air to escape when you put it in the water bath. So let's go on and, and put those in the water bath just so we can show. So, yeah. um, so we're going to go on and put these in. And this next step is the most important part is that we're putting them down nice and full. And we have jars in here that we, we want to keep our jars hot until we're ready to fill them up. But so we're putting them down here. We want to make sure that they're going to be covered, which will not be a problem with the liquid a half an inch above when we get ready to boil them. And then we'll put our lid on really nice and secure. And this is going to have to kind of hit the corners, but you want a tight fitting lid. No, she's on here. You want a tight fitting lid. And then we go on and turn the fire back up all the way and we cook it for um, for our jet and the jello is we bring it up to a boil and then we boil for 10 minutes. And then we go on and take them out and we sit them um, to where they're going to stay in that same spot for about 24 hours. Tick, 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 and magically, here one is done. Oh, this is delightful. I'm so excited. I must open it and have some right away. Don't open it, really. <laughs> oh, I'm going to. <laughs> because he likes jelly. This is like half a serving in the middle of the night on a spoon for me. <laughs> but so, so that's how it is. And then we let it sit for 24 hours. But when we used to use um, a different kitchen, we had to immediately take it home and let it sit there for 24 hours. So you can move it them a little bit, um, but you want that seal to really seal well. And that's why you're not trying to move them around. You're also, you don't leave them in the water bath to say, you, oh, I'm done and I'm so tired. I'm just going to leave it here. No, you need to do, do that last step. Take it out so that it cools down at the right speed. If it's in the water bath, it is it's going to take a lot longer to cool down. But and there will, there will be a point where it will the pressure will equalize and it'll allow fluids back in and break the seal. Yes. So Chris, so did you remind me um, how long you said to keep them in the water bath? So for our for the jellies, most of the time it's ten minutes. That you're 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 bringing your water up to a boil and then you're boiling it for ten minutes. And then at that ten minutes, I turn it off. I let the boil slow down so that I'm not getting burnt pulling them out. So I wait about five minutes after that, and then I pull them all out. So, so the, if you, the if water you, is hot when you put uh -huh. them in. Uh -huh. um, is there a certain temperature that you want to start with? Because I'm just thinking like, you know, the process to warm the water up till it boils is a certain amount of time. And we keep that hot water hot. So when we're pulling our jars out, we're doing this as fast as we can. We're putting our product in a hot jar and our, our product is hot too. And then we seal it up and we put it right back into the hot water. And after we get them all sealed and put in there, then we seal the lid up good and turn it back up and bring it to a boil. So the water is staying hot this whole time. Yeah, putting a putting a cold jar in the hot water, you're going to shatter your glass. That's how I used to make crystal marble. You heat the marble up, you throw it in cold water, the marble shatters. Yeah, but we don't want that with our jars. Um, 
So everything needs to be hot. Unless your recipe actually says um, that you, like on cucumbers, sometimes it says to put a cold cucumber into it, but you're still using a hot jar. Okay, well, any, we're any coming up questions? on time. So any last uh, burning questions? Um, if, you're here, if you're here in Kansas City, reach out to me. We will be doing a canning class in October or November. And it'll be it'll be probably a tomato product and a jelly or a jelly. Okay, well, I'll put that in the follow-up email to everyone. Um, and thank you so much, Chris, for this really informed i mean i used to watch my grandma do this but i guess i just was never really paying much attention so uh -huh. it's it's really not i mean it is science but i don't think it's rocket science and right. so um this has been a really great introduction and um yeah if you are local definitely check out um chris's um classes she's got a ton of them from cheese making to you name it so um it's it's and really plug, great for can i plug our uh, so our farm is pepperberries urban farm but we have a nonprofit for all of our teaching and that is pepperberries teaching emporium so if you find us on facebook and instagram like us and follow what we're doing so pepperberries teaching emporium yes okay all right. Well, again, um, thanks so much, Chris, and um, really appreciate you sharing your knowledge with us today. Um, this was was really great and makes me kind of inspired now. So I hope everyone else is. And we'll be sending out the recording for anything that you want to review. Um, I'll also get the um, names of the products that um, Chris mentioned um, in Bradford, so um, wonderfully modeled, and uh, we'll include that as well. Um, obviously, we're not um, we're not promoting any any particular product, but sometimes it's just easier to to hear like what's working for me and um, try it out for yourself um, and see how it works for you. So, um, thanks again, everyone, for being here. Um, and we will see you uh, next month. All right. Bye-bye, everyone.